We think of ideas as products of our own creativity, but what if we've got it exactly the wrong way around? What if its ideas are manipulating us to spread as far and wide as they can? Richard Dawkins first proposed in The Selfish Gene that ideas seem to evolve like genes do, competing and replicating over time. And he coined the term meme. Examples of memes are tunes, ideas, catchphrases, clothing fashions, ways of making pots or of building arches. Just as genes propagate themselves in the gene pool by leaping from body to body via sperms or eggs, so memes propagate themselves in the meme pool by leaping from brain to brain via a process which, in a broad sense, can be called imitation. In the 1970s, evolutionary biology was undergoing a paradigm shift. Scientists were increasingly focused on understanding how complex behaviours, traits and patterns could emerge from the simple rules of natural selection. Unprecedented power to manipulate nature. One of the key thinkers at this time was Richard Dawkins, an evolutionary biologist and science communicator who sought to popularise the gene-centred view of evolution. In his groundbreaking 1976 book, The Selfish Gene, Dawkins argues that genes, not individuals or groups, are the true units of selection in evolution. An individual organism is a survival machine for the self-replicating coded information in which it contains. This idea reframed our understanding of biology, emphasizing that genes selfishly work to ensure their own replication across generations, even if the outcomes for the organisms they inhabit are sometimes counterintuitive. Inside our heads exists another ecosystem, one of ideas, an abstract mixture of thought all boiling together in your big soupy head. Naturally, only the strongest survive, or rather, the fittest. Dawkins argues that only genes make exact or near-exact copies of themselves throughout generations, and that anything that has this property, anything that self-replicates, even say on other planets, would adhere to the same Darwinian rules of natural selection. The fittest survive, while everything else fades away. And that posed the question to him, wouldn't that same mechanism work for people exchanging ideas? So what makes a meme successful? To thrive, a meme needs fertile ground, a willing mind to take it out of the head of someone else and replicate it. Like genes shaped by natural selection, ideas adapt to their environment. They survive and thrive by fitting into a cultural landscape. A meme, as Dawkins puts it, is a virus of the mind. It spreads for the simple reason that it can. Each retelling, reinterpretation or remix introduces new variation. In this way, memes like genes have their own agenda, and you as an organism are a vehicle for it to get as far into the future as it can. Like any game of telephone, the turbulent nature of humans communicating means that memes are very rarely copied with exact detail. In this way, it's almost impossible to take a thought out of someone's head and interpret it in a way that it is exactly replicated. Art created by an artist will always be interpreted in a way that it wasn't intended to. As long as a meme is useful, it will be replicated across time. But what's really interesting is that memes, once proved useful enough, at some point start to influence genetic evolution. If animals can learn behaviours like dogs learning tricks, chimpanzees using tools, squirrels burying nuts, or the countless behaviours of humans, then it stands to reason that at some point there's a lie, where things move out of the realm of the meme and become genetically coded. Instinct. This is often called the Baldwin effect. The speed at which an organism can pick up and use a meme means that the selectiveness of DNA and the selectiveness of memes begin to intersect. As generations go by, each successive generation becomes better and faster at picking up the new trick. And as long as the meme remains useful, this means that the meme will eventually be interpreted into the genome. Memes are both the inheritance and the architects of our collective evolution, influencing who we are and who we might become. Your ideas are on a mission that you are completely unaware of. And with the randomness that they evolve, you have to start to ask the question. Are you coming up with your own ideas? Or are they just influencing you to get as far into the future as they can? <laughs>